What's up, nerds, and welcome back to another episode of Maddie Mods. I should probably start this fucking video. <laughs> if you guys watched the last video, you know that we stopped before installing the iWire kit. That is because I wanted to find out actually how to install the iWire kit so I could share it with you guys. That way, when you encounter that and you have to do this mod, uh, you have a much easier time doing it than having to look it up and read, because reading is hard. So I'm here to help you with that. So the first thing I wanna show you is what all comes in this kit. If you're wondering why you would need this kit, I go over all of that in the previous video and went way more in depth than I needed to. So if you're interested in watching that, I'm gonna link it like right above here and you can go check that out before watching and continuing forward with this video. Going over what all is included in this, you get a power wire, uh, super long because it's supposed to run from the positive terminal all the way back to the very back of the car where it is going to connect to this guy. In the back of your car, you're gonna have your fuel pump control module. On the Legacies, at least on the wagons, it's on the driver's side. For almost every other Subaru out there, it's going to be on the passenger side. The male end of this is going to plug in like it should. The wiring from the car that would normally plug into that is going to plug into this. And that's going to split it off in the signals it wants to where this is only seeing a few parameters that it controls, like the safety shut off and the low mid high and all the other voltage and wiring and everything is going to go forward to the pump. Now off of this, you also have a ground, so you're going to want to make sure that is plugged into a very good ground source. These two plugs here on this are going to plug into that controller that they have, so they're going to plug into those two plugs there. Then coming up off of this, you're going to have this line. This line is going to plug into this other harness here, and that is going to be what actually sends the power to the pump. Mine have the little ringlets because it goes to the stud kit. You may have just where it's wires and that is a different process where you would D-pin, tuck them back and plug those wires in instead to the factory wiring. And then off of this red wire, he gives you an add a fuse and that is going to be put into place. You wanna make sure that you put the fuse that's originally in there in this as well or else this is not going to work. The hardware kit has this little boot that boot is intended to go on the positive cable that is going to be ran to this guy here. So make sure you include the boot because it's going to be an open battery source. Also included in the kit is the circuit breaker. This is actually going to go up near the battery. The one that is like copper colored, uh, that is labeled battery. So that'll be the positive from the battery. We'll go straight to that just with this little guy here. And then on this one that is labeled aux, that's where this big long cable is going to run from the engine bay all the way back to the back of the car. I'm gonna start by putting this on and then I'm going to figure out where that wiring is going to go through the car. We'll get it back to the back of the car. We'll install this guy and then walk you through the rest. If you don't have a battery box, you're gonna to have to find somewhere down here, preferably away from like ground points and stuff like that. So I'm gonna screw this in uh, and then we will get moving on the rest of the kit. So now you're gonna put this guy on here and then the other side of this ring is gonna sit on top like that. Cool. Now we got this cable assembly and if we wanted to, be on like that. That's kinda how we want. But for now, we're gonna leave that off. So now I gotta run this cable from inside the car up through a grommet around the side of the fender, up to over here, and over to this side here. Make sure, big important step, the red does not come forward, the black side is going to come forward to the engine bay. So if you watched the other video, you already know that I've done some ripping and tearing to the inside of this car already. So what I'm gonna do now is take these panels off. I'm gonna make a channel to where I can run that cable from the front, down through this way and up and around here. And that's gonna go to underneath here where that fuel pump is, slide through and go to the back. This car's fucking gross. So I pulled up all this stuff. That way I can run this line down through here. I kinda just BS through this line back here for now. Pulled down this kick panel. I took all these kick panels off. That way I can get to this spot up here. So 
I am shooting for trying to make my camera focus on this somehow. Let's do that. I'm shooting for that grommet right there because through the top, nothing runs right there yet. And that'll come out from there. It's gonna run up with all of these wires up here and into the engine bay. But for right now, we're gonna get Taco Bell, feed our tummies, and then I'll be back and I will finish routing this line. So red wire is ran everywhere I need it to. It's all connected up at the circuit breaker. Goes into the fender well there. You can kind of see it dangling out here because I haven't tucked it up yet. I was just making sure I had slack on both sides currently before I do that. And I did want to show you guys on here before I go through and tuck it. So it's coming down from this. I'm going to make it go with this loom right here and go underneath the carpet. On some of the models, you can squeeze it into this little spot here, but this is actually what holds all of this and there's no room if I do it that way. So I have to pull these up and when I pop them up, I can put them in with those underneath. Then when I do that, it's gonna run behind here and stay underneath the carpet away from anything it could possibly get cut on or messed with. As I come around the back, because this is going to be on the driver's side, I'm following up with this loom here all the way over and it's just gonna follow that loom back because that's actually the loom that winds up coming back here and powering the fuel pump controller. So now that I have that, I can take this guy and find a good spot for this in the trunk where it's going to be able to connect with the fuel pump control module. So if I put this down here, this would normally be the slot that's the push pin. I can see the push pin on the side. It has this big piece that juts out right here. So I have to make sure this isn't in the way of that trying to come into this gap here. First things first, I'm probably gonna plug these in just to make sure that everything's gonna fit right as I'm doing this. Uh, this orange wire you don't have to worry about. That is a lead for if you were doing two pumps. These are going to plug into these guys here. So I'll get this, plug in this, and get this guy plugged in here. So those are now set up the way I want them. Uh, while I'm at it, I'm going to run this guy. So I want to find out which way, at least get kind of the tail end of this figured out. Wagons are difficult. Okay. Well, the good news is, running off this line, I can see there's a ground right here, so I'm gonna use that for this guy. And just put that under there. Yeah, there we go. Just get the paint off the ground, that way we have a good ground to go off of. happy ground that's not going to have any issues. Uh, I'd say if, if you also have a BP and you're messing around with this, make sure this hose stays where it's going. This is your drain tube hose for the upper rail system for your uh, sunroof. So if that's popped out, now you got water getting in the car. So make sure if you're playing around in this location, you don't potentially unplug that and then never put it back. I'm gonna get this set up back up here. The last thing I have to do with this is mount it and put this guy with the boot on there. So once I do that, I'm going to pull this back out. I will have already tucked all of this and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. So I have the back half of this put together to the point where I want it. So I have this all running back here. It runs up this guy all the way over. I was doing some measurements with this harness that's actually going to go up to the fuel pump and I was trying to run it with this, but I actually can't because you can tell that this kit was designed with the plan for all of this stuff to be on this side of the car, closer to the fuel pump. So that is a very tight fit with that harness because it's going to connect to this harness uh, and this harness is the one that is going to go 
over and connect up to where we put our two posts on the top of the canister. So I can run that underneath this and get it over to that other side where you normally have the uh, Venturi pump and all that, sending it from one saddle to the other, but it's gonna be really tight. So I have that cord pulled about as tight as I can with still having slack for stuff to go over it. And we're gonna try and make this work. So at this point, I can put back together the back half of the car and mess more with this stuff here. Now that the back of the car is completely reassembled, I gotta deal with the part of this that I really don't wanna mess with again. And that is taking back out the fuel pump and getting the stud bypass kit in. So now that I've got this all disassembled again, what we're replacing with this stud kit is the factory wiring inside the canister. So they give you this, this has the two pieces to be able to um, mount these guys up somewhere in here. And then they're going to go through this uh, to the outside where that other wiring harness is going to come through and connect up to these. So what I have to do now is determine where the best spot to put these is. And the main thing you wanna do is make sure you don't put them anywhere these two guys are at. So I think I'll use the same location and that should allow us to get the wires up and put them on there nicely once we're all done. So by holding this up, we're able to mark inside where we want to drill the holes to be able to put the studs through. For this guy, you are going to keep this ground wire. They already include a ground wire. So you're gonna clip this. You wanna leave a lot of it because this telescopes and it has that kind of spring to it as it's all together. So you need to make sure that that is there for the cord to be able to spring as this moves up and down. So I'm gonna leave as much of this as possible. So we're just gonna cut it right there. This is not gonna be used anymore. So we're gonna go right here on that guy, which hopefully it'll mark. If you have fuel on there, it kind of gets hard to mark. And then we're gonna go over here in the middle of this guy, just right there. And I think those are gonna be good points to be able to put that. Final size to be able to use these insulating little uh, plastic pieces is 15 60 fourths. So hopefully you have that. If you don't get one, you wanna make sure it's 15 60 fourths. Uh, and then I'm just using a smaller one as a pilot. Okay. Now we have both of our base holes drilled. We'll step up to the 15 64th to make that final hole. Make sure if you have any little pieces of plastic to get it out of there. It likes to ball up like that. And now we're ready to install this thing. Little crush insulator first. Put that on there. So I'll put these through both of the holes. Just like that. I'm gonna use one of the washers on this guy. And with it like that, I'm gonna put that through the insulator like that. Then from the back side, we're gonna take a washer, the washer on there, start our first one. You wanna make sure that the locking portion, this little triangular piece is facing downward. That way you can get a couple of threads on there. And you just wanna make sure that it's you know, fully crushed in there, but don't go too hard on it because they will snap. So that is completed. There's our bypass. On the other side, we're gonna have that hold down the other two guys. But now we gotta reassemble this. And then I'm going to do this part last. That way I'm not messing with it until everything else is all reassembled. All right, so once you have these tightened down, you wanna kinda shape them like this because we're gonna want to get this up inside here like this. That way it's got room to spring up and down and not really hit anything. Uh, and it's going to be attached to the pump, which is going to be like roughly right here. Uh, so you wanna just keep it up in there for now. You know. 
make sure everything clicks in really good. Ha! <laughs> Don't forget the springs. Idiot. I literally do that every single time. Now that is able to kind of coil up in there. Right, you can spring like we want it to, but it's not making contact with anything. Whoop! There we go. That's all tucked up in there, nice. Just gotta plug all these guys in. I'm gonna be honest, this is a lot easier to do when you're not filming yourself. I'm standing like directly in the path of the camera, so you can hopefully kind of see what I'm doing. Ah, uh, yes, there we are. Now, time for this guy. So let me know rough estimates of how long that is. Take that into account. Say right there. Make sure you got this guy on there. Nice and good. Now we just want to get the heat shrink on there and do not use a flame. That would be bad news. Perfect. So that's all together. We've got that wire on there. Now all we have to do is put this back in the basket and plug it in. Well, I guess there is one last thing you want to make sure you do before you button it all up. And that is noting where the blue wire is and where the white wire is. So I got blue. You got white. So let's put a mark. B for blue. W for white. And now we can final assemble it and throw it back in the car. So this definitely was a very annoying part of this, at least if you're trying to make it look clean. So I got all of this ran over with that line and then I actually cut a little hole in the grommet. So I was able to feed this part of this through this grommet and then underneath here. And it took a bunch of attempts to try and get it out of there. But now we got them over here and they're on there just like they should be. So that completes this part of the install. I can button up the back of the car and all we have left to do now is run this red wire all the way up through where that power wire is going to the fuse box up front. we have that all put back together all we have left to do is get this guy on here and then put it into the proper fuse and all we need for the fuse is just something that is on only when ignition is on and stays on during cranking but I believe ignition one does the good news is if I mess this part up I still have to install a bunch of things on this car before I'm testing this so we'll find out in a later video if I picked the wrong one. Helps when doing this to work by feel. And that way, you're not seeing spiders. You just feel them. Oh my God, what the fuck is that? What is this? You're a wizard, Harry. What?
I had a tree growing in my car. And it's a prickly boy. Uh, so there's our wire. Zoom that out a little bit. Coming out of that grommet, going up there. All the way in there. Attach that guy. So not hanging down, not in the way. Once we put this up, it'll be better. Look that up on top of these. We are good to go, guys. Uh, this would be where you would test and see if it works, but obviously, I don't have fuel lines hooked up, so I don't want to try and run the pump or do anything like that. So I will do that testing after this all comes on, but for now, I think I am all done tonight because it is like really dark and it's one in the morning and I don't want to be loud and wake anyone up or freak anyone out, so yeah. All right, so that is all I've got for you in this one. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If not, oh well, no big deal. Don't have to like everything. And then uh, if you have any questions or anything on the iWire kit, leave it in the comments below. Or if you have uh, any tips or anything for anyone else that might be tackling this. Really was not that bad, it just took kind of a while, especially uh, trying to film it in between. Uh, definitely added a bit to it. So that's all I've got for you guys this time. And then word of the day is Skittles. So I'm gonna go eat some Skittles. Later. Mm -hmm.